Okay, so when hot combing the closure, I usually like to at least generally make the part that I want the closure to be in. This was already a middle part, so the middle part was kind of already there. I'll kind of clip the hair in two separate sides. We're going to use a Care Care wax stick. You want to make sure you only put the wax at the root of the hair or else the hair will get extremely waxy and you're going to hot comb it nice and flat. Because it gets really hot, I like to pass over it about two, three times and then use my hand to press it and that helps it get super flat. And you wanna continue doing this until you finish one side of the hair up to about a half inch sections. So do this in about half inch sections until you get to your part and you're just gonna continue hot combing it over and alternating pressing your hand until it gets super flat. And you don't want to move on to the next section until you can actually see the hair follicles in the closure all going in a downward direction. Okay, side note, while you watch me hot comb the rest of this closure, it is super important that the client has a good closure. My clients are required to get the closure from me. I always do HD closures. I used to do transparent closures. I never had a problem with those, but the HD just gives a little extra oomph. So I always do HD closures. They have to be bought from me and that's kind of non-negotiable. Okay, now that we've reached the top of the closure, you're still gonna hot comb downward like we did all of the other areas. I usually save the very front of the closure for the end because I have to turn the hot comb down. I'll put a little wax there, turn the hot comb down so that I can safely go over this area quite a few times. This is usually the hardest area to get super flat. Once I do the first side, I'm gonna switch over and do the other side. And we're just doing the two sides of the part. Then once you finish your two sides of your part, I usually do a line at the end of where the part ends and comb that hair backward because that's going to be the hair that goes backward behind the part to make it look natural. The part is probably not going to be straight the first time going around. So you're going to kind of clean everything up, make sure hair goes where it needs to go, make sure that the part is nice and straight and do your final hot comb. So as I clean up the part, I'm gonna hot comb the hair back over where it needs to be to make sure everything looks nice and neat. So you should have one side going to the left, one side going to the right, and then the backwards part goes to the back just like you would on a real person's hair because we're trying to mimic a traditional install. I'm super meticulous, so we're just gonna keep hot combing so we can't hot comb no more. You're just gonna keep going until it's super, super flat. So here we're gonna do the front points right in front of the part, just to make sure those aren't sticking up. We want them to be super, super, super flat. As flat as you can possibly get them without irritating your client with the heat, using your hand to press down. And you're just gonna keep hot combing it. Even if you have to go over it several times, you just keep hot combing it. Yes, I am still hot combing, still going through and make sure all the hairs are going into their proper directions. Make sure the closure is flawless. That way, during the duration of her wearing it, she does not have to worry about doing this too much.
My three top products I use for humidity, especially when I'm doing bone straight sleek looks, is the Garnier Fruity Sleek and Shine. Sometimes I'll use Bio Silk, and I definitely always use that Flexi Spray just because I love how it's brushable. A little hack that I started doing, take a little bit of that gel that we used earlier from Got to Be, and you can use your brush and just brush down the front parts that may still be a little bit upward from not hot combing flatly, and it will help to get that to lay super, super flat. Usually I don't need to blow dry it. It kind of lays flat just from me brushing it, but you can blow dry it, and it helps to give that little extra oomph So we're gonna take our RK contour palette and I usually kind of just mix some colors together to get the client's complexion slightly lighter than their complexion, like a real scalp. And we're just gonna use our angled brow brush and we're gonna go straight down the part. I typically do not pluck parts. My closures that I sell have a nice like scalp-like look so I don't have to actually pluck hair out. This helps your client to be able to use the closure more than once. You can pluck parts, but you wanna make sure you're not plucking too much. That way your client doesn't lose the integrity of the closure. So we're just gonna apply that concealer and we'll use the other end to fade it in so there's no harsh lines. Kinda of like you would eyebrows if you were filling them in. Don't worry if you over conceal it or if you might mess up the color. You can take the Kiss Quick Cover Root Touch Up is my favorite to fix those problems, kind of make the line a little sharper. You can see that here, or you can take the Clairol gel, it's like a little brush gel. I had that attached at the bottom as well in the notes. Whichever one tends to work better for you. I like the mascara type of cover that's in this Kiss bottle just because it doesn't come out with a lot of product it lets me control where i'm applying the product to so it's my personal preference but to each their own whichever one you like better use the brush just to kind of blend it in so it can blend into the hair so the kiss comes in several different colors i only like the black one the brown one gives like this weird glitter residue so i don't typically use that one you'll have to use a clear all if you want to get into the other colors and just be careful how it comes out so at this point i'll take the tip of my comb and kind of put it over the part and spray hairspray over just to kind of get that hair to go nice and neatly away from the part and use my end of my comb or my hand to kind of brush those hairs down. Sometimes I'll use the Gossip Bee hairspray, but most of the time I like to use the Flexi Spray just so that it's not hard and crunchy or leave any white residues. If you're doing a style that you want to look a little bit more crisp rather than the super soft, traditional install type of look, you can use the Gossip Bee hairspray. It'll give it more of like a permanent concrete type of setting. I'm gonna make sure I include all the products I'm using in the notes, but I like to use the Flexible Hairspray by Living Proof. It doesn't get hard, so you're able to help get rid of those flyaways and keep the hair from getting frizzy in the humidity since I'm in Houston. Even if you have a client that wants to give that perm look, not necessarily baby hair, but they want it to look like they got a little perm in the front, you can gel that down and style it that way. I like to use it better than hairspray. Um, I usually only use hairspray as a finishing spray because I feel like sometimes hairspray can get very crunchy and the gel gives you time to mold it. 
if you still had lace attached we would have snipped the lace with our lace cutting scissors i used some from the wig dealer i'll also have that down in the notes they're very small scissors that helps to give you that jagged cut you don't want to cut straight across you want to make sure you do like a nice little jagged cut that way it can be kind of realistic and it doesn't look super clean this is the third time she has used this hair to install so it's already kind of cut and trimmed the way that she liked it the first time so i don't really need to change anything as you can see she would be able to pull it back without showing her band and that's it <laughs> 